Okay, let's finally get into some more uh, stop the high level, stop the setup. Let's get into this now. This is what you want to know, what you need to know. The QuickBook Web Connector is open through update services here, file menu. You can double click over here on the lower right. Looks like that again. And um, let me also mention too, I, I talked about the, Win the Ubuntu subsystem. I didn't tell you how to install that. It's only for Windows 10 as well. Um, that's beyond the scope of this training. So it wasn't very hard to do. There's plenty of tutorials on how to do it. Um, but let's take another step back a little bit. We're gonna have to talk about, okay, here is the library I'm talking about in Ruby. It's called a gem. You will be able to translate this over to your, your tech stack. Ruby, very understandable language. If there's any kind of craziness going on, I'll explain that. Uh, to help you make that translation. And uh, you're gonna get access to this repo as well. It's private. I'm not gonna make it public. And uh, you'll be given access to it through Google, uh, excuse me, through um, GitHub permissions. And you'll be able to see it in depth, go back over these training, uh, these training videos and then translate it into your tech stack. So a lot of it's gonna be going into this, to the nitty gritty. There is a part of um, this library that you can actually embed a web app into the library. So this is a Rails engine, what's called a Rails engine. And it's made for integrating into Ruby on Rails. And uh, it has a kind of a neat thing that you can make a dummy app. So this is a Rails app within the Rails engine that you can run to test the engine or the library. Not, I will be going into this code a lot because this is gonna be like your code right here. This spec dummy, this is like your app and it's gonna be talking um, to the QuickBooks web connector. But this is also a library that's embedded in this root level. Okay, so not need to go too crazy on that. Now before, in the previous, a previous video, I talked to you about the importance of starting your app. Okay, this is gonna be the spec dummy app, but your app this way, and binding it to 0.0.0. .0. I'm also gonna be using port 3001. So I'm gonna start this up. This is gonna be the sample app we're gonna go over. It does, invoices, which is usually the crux, I would say almost all the time, you know, you're going to be tasked with getting invoices over, or uh, it could be another transaction, journal entries are popular, purchase orders, all of this, uh, let me go over to the app and explain, okay, I'm going back to the Windows Virtual Machine, if you remember, I uh, showed you how to uh, in, uh, install set up the um, the host file in Windows that you can talk back to your web app if you're using a virtual machine. And here I am. And let's just refresh it. This is the sample app here. And it does customers and invoices. Let me go to the integration page. And in the integration page, you're gonna have this as well in your app. This is, it's very standard to have like an integration page. You're, you'll have like a tutorial on how to set up the QuickBooks web connector for the client. It'll look like this. You can generate a link. You're gonna to wanna to generate a password for them. Okay. And um, let me, I'm gonna skip that a sec on, on what to do. Um, so I can just keep things moving, but you'll have something like this. You'll be generating like an API key for them or a password. You don't need to worry about usernames. And um, you also have like uh, an import page. We'll go, I'll go over these two. You know, when the customer first starts, you want to get all their, in, you know, their customers in, match them to your customers. In this case, items, it's like QuickBooks items or products, match them up to your products. You may have associations that need to be made from your app with QuickBooks, like um, things to, uh, um, uh, for, for example, you might have a certain product 
on your app and it's you want it to match to the user's QuickBook items, they may have a catch-all for, uh, let's say, something like gaskets. You have many gaskets, but uh, they just want to map it to a, a, um, a, a sales uh, item that is gaskets. It's a catch-all. So you'll have like these, these associations. You might have an error section. I don't have that. Uh, that filled in but to let, let me um so this you would have this and I'm gonna go back to my code to uh, so we can take a look at what this file actually looks like and how you might generate it